Okay, so we will continue with our uh, discussion on adiabatic processes and I will uh, introduce the concept of air parcel to you. The concept of air parcel is very important. Uh, using an air parcel and adiabatic process, we'll, uh, it will lead us to an important concept called the potential temperature theta, which is equivalent of density in incompressible fluid, where density remains constant. So in today's class, we will we'll first introduce this construct or a quantity called the potential temperature theta. Then we'll see that it is conserved during adiabatic processes. And then in subsequent classes, we will use this uh, framework of the potential temperature to solve many problems of interest to atmospheric thermodynamics and atmospheric science in general. Okay. So to have a quick recap of what we did yesterday, an adiabatic process is one which dq is 0. As you know, the heat transfer could take place either by conduction, convection, radiation or one or more of these. So when you say dq is 0, all of these are suppressed by some way or the other. Okay. And uh, we saw a case where we saw a case where uh, you go from 1 to 2, you also go from uh, 1 to 2 dash and uh, this was A, is it? Or B and we wanted to figure out uh, when we declared that A is isothermal, right? Okay. I pose the question to you uh, P2 dash is P2 dash greater than P2, or finally, uh, we concluded that P2 dash is indeed. So, the adiabat please recall that we are treating uh, atmospheric air to be an ideal gas, right? And then uh, PV equal to RT. V specific volume. So, this is uh, another way of writing P equal to rho RT. Now, isothermal process. T is a constant, therefore, PV is a constant. Okay. So, the isothermal process. triangular hyperbola, correct? So, already we know that P v to the power of gamma is constant, but let us pretend that we do not know that P v to the power of gamma is a constant. So, we will turn around and prove that P v is equal to gamma and is equal to constant, maybe after half an hour and the time is opportune for us or it is required for us to prove that. And then we will get on to the concept of potential temperature. Is it fine? So, we have discussed this, it is steeper than this, but still let us feign or pretend that we do not know the relationship how. Uh, uh, so, if for a general polytropic process, P v to the power of n is constant, what is this n in the case of an adiabatic process? Let us figure it out after some time. But now we have to introduce the con concept of air parcel. Okay. So, we have to look at the concept of air parcel. 
in conventional fluid mechanics mixing is viewed as what mixing in fluid mechanics or mixing is a result of random motions of individual molecules right viewed as a result of atmosphere mixing is important only in the first few centimeters above the earth's surface and beyond the turbo pass that is beyond 105 kilometers so more or less from 0 to 105 kilometers mixing is uh, this microscopic mixing is not a big deal with if you use this microscopic uh, mixing it will it will not lead you to uh, uh, sub, you, you will not make substantial progress in your theory of atmospheric thermodynamics and your ability to solve equations and so on. Is it okay? So, because we, because this will involve solving a very complex equations and all that, it will lead to the CFD equation, Navier Stokes and all that. Okay. So, in the atmosphere, mixing is uh, even in atmosphere, we will still do it. But they, for the concept of for solving problems in thermodynamics, this is uh, too small a scale for us. Okay. Mixing is important. and beyond turbo pass. So, what do you do? At intermediate levels, I stand corrected. In the atmosphere, molecular mixing. Okay. So, at intermediate levels mixing is accomplished by exchange of macroscopic air parcel. Okay. parcels are. So, it is a framework with which we can analyze problems just like we introduce a system or a control volume in normal engineering thermodynamics in order for us to study the first law for a closed system for a system we introduce what is a system. Then if you want to look at devices where some mass comes in and comes out and some mass goes out as in the case of a pump, a turbine, compressor, the system concept is no good. We saw that it uh, you have seen in your first year courses that it is very difficult to solve problems where uh, some mass is coming in, some mass is going out using the concept of uh, using the uh, construct of system. So, we introduce something called control volume where you put some dashed box and you find out what are the masses entering, what are the masses leaving, what is the enthalpy which is coming in, what is the enthalpy which is going out. So, the net change in enthalpy must be equal to the difference between the heat and work done. And this work in this work will be wx we call it as the external work work which could be negative in the case of a pump and compressor and it will be positive in the case of a windmill or a steam turbine or a gas type this is how we solve problems in thermodynamics so when you have a control volume we look at what is called sfee -E, steady flow energy equation then we also solved unsteady problems unsteady problem classic example is deflation deflating a balloon inflating a balloon and all this these are some special cases, otherwise generally we solve steady state problems. As far as atmosphere is concerned, just like we introduce this uh, concept of system and control volume, we have to introduce the concept of air parcel. 
ok. So, this air parcel we do not worry about individual molecules they are too small for us ok. So, what should be the scale of this? What are the scales? I mean length scales. So, it can vary from millimeters all the way up to the radius of the earth all are included. So, everything is an air parcel. So, it makes the analysis lot easier ok. So, you understand? Now, we have established the conceptual framework or the concept of an air parcel. What are the assumptions involved in an air parcel? We list them 1, 2, 3, 4. Based on these assumptions and based on the concept of an air parcel, what could we do further? We can actually, after this air parcel concept is introduced, we can first figure out how temperature changes with height in the atmosphere. That is called the lapse rate. This is called the theoretical lapse rate. The actual lapse rate will be measured by a balloon or you can infer it from a satellite. It will be little bit different because some of the assumptions will be violated or there will be other mixing, there will be winds and all this. Okay, so, that is what we are going to see. Then we will see using this air parcel and adiabatic concept, we will also introduce the potential temperature. All right. So, assumptions. Shall I dictate the assumption? Yes, that would be better. So, assumptions number 1, please take it down, please take them down. The air parcel is thermally insulated from the surroundings. The air parcel is thermally insulated from the surroundings. So, I am writing the mathem equal mathematical statement of that on the blackboard. The air parcel is thermally insulated from the surroundings. The air parcel is always at the it is always at the same pressure as the environmental air at the same level. The air parcel is at the same pressure as the environmental air at the same level. Okay. The kinetic energy of the parcel the kinetic energy of the parcel is a negligible the kinetic energy of the parcel is a neg negligible fraction of its total energy What does it imply? The parcel moves? Ah. Uh -huh. ah, the parcel it means the parcel moves very slowly. Okay. So, these are the three main assumptions in our theoretical development. So, it is adiabatic. The pressure of the air uh, the pressure of the air parcel is the same as the pressure of the environmental air. Otherwise, it will not stay in that level, no, it will do something. Then the kinetic energy of the parcel is very small compared to its total energy. In reality, one or more of these assumptions will be violated. Be that as it may, we assume that none of these is violated, so that you get a theoretical handle on the problem, so that we are able to make progress in atmospheric thermodynamics. Sir, uh, does the third point be uh, net force acting on the air parcel is 0? What net force? External forces. No, yes, it, if for stationary air parcel, yes. For a stationary air parcel, yes it is. Even if it is uh, make, moving at the uniform velocity, it net force is 0. So, you have to be careful. Huh? Next concept is the dry adiabatic lapse rate. Okay. Is it clear up to this stage?
consider a parcel of air consider a parcel of air moving around in the earth's atmosphere it satisfies all the conditions satisfies all conditions Please apply the first law to the parcel. You apply the first law to the parcel, d q equal to d w plus p d. I am always making this mistake no, from yesterday onwards plus d u, d u huh? ok fine. So, I will stay with d u for the time being because huh? I have a reason. So, d q is oh, ok. Okay. Please expand that. It seems you are so doing the same thing again and again from yesterday. Some people will get that feeling. What is again and again? We are going round and round. But now there is a now there is a departure, which I am going to make. I am going to talk about. We are going to. What is the idea of this exercise? We want to get the lapse rate, dt by dz. This dh. H is already C p into t. So, d t is inherent there. So, please bring the z into the equation. So, where will that z come? Huh? Uh, what is that equation? So, what is that? It is coming from? It is coming from the hydrostatic equation. Hypsometric equation is a thickness equation z 2 minus z 1 is r d t v by g naught uh, ln p 1 by p 2. So, you have to get, so we are linking up the first law of thermodynamics, air parcel, adiabatic process and the hydrostatic equation. That is why temperature and z, otherwise temperature and z, it is very difficult to link the two. All right, let us do that. Hmm? Okay, so uh, dh. d h is plus v d p eh? is this ok. Mm. Minus, 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 minus.
So, let us So, this is the expression for the dry adiabatic lapse rate, how temperature decreases with height in the atmosphere, but it is a theoretical lapse rate and dry lapse rate, the actual lapse rate will be different because moisture has not been considered. There are many assumptions you have made in the air parcel and all that. Okay. So, this is the dry adiabatic lapse rate. Please substitute the values of Cp for air and G and get the value. If you want, you can have that minus also. But please note that it is not applicable beyond turbo pass, this thing and uh, troposphere. Please remember the general nature of shape, uh, general nature of the shape of the temperature is a Z profile. Okay. Interview question uh, temperature decrease, so it will, it will keep on decreasing till we go to the sun. That question is a stupid question asked by many people in the interview. At least after going through this course, you know that this happens in the troposphere. Okay. So, actual lapse rate. So, this is called gamma, this is one form of gamma. Okay. Actual lapse rate. Hmm? Actual lapse rate gamma. is usually between 6 to 7 okay hmm? let us do a simple now let us consider now 10:25 in the morning okay let's say coimbatore I do not know Coimbatore's uh, elevation, let us say some 400 meter. So, Ut is at some 2000, 285 meters. Can you find out what will be the temperature in Ut now? Ut is a hill resort, you have been there, oh, see before coming to classes itself. <laughs> hmm. So, what so OT will be cool correct, how much by how much. So, assume some 6.5. Okay. Of course, because of vegetation, lakes and winds and all that, it may be slightly plus or minus 1 or 2 degrees, but is it correct, Sojanya, is it okay? Uh, how much is it? Oh, 18 degrees. So, 25 degrees centigrade and 50 percent relative humidity is considered as the best, it's considered as human comfort. So, all the air conditioners are set for some ash ray, it is called the ash ray standard. So, 25 degrees and uh, 50, but this is, I do not know why they have set it for all the countries. Okay. It, it is not, it need not be applicable for a tropical country like India, where generally it is very hot. 
So, for example, Japan, Japan, where I had been to recently, the trains uh, everywhere they are set at 27 instead of 25. If you set it at 27, enormous savings you can do, particularly in a country like that. Ours, there is no need for, uh, but actually, here because it is very hot, they will set it to 23. So, there will be lot of difference when you go into an AC room and come out of it in. Uh, it should not be the case, right? Uh, so, but they are not able to agree because the, uh, if we, there should be some national or regional standards which will say that everybody need not subscribe to. Different people can feel comfortable at different temperatures within a range, right? Or everybody's temperature now will not be 98.4. So now this uh, Ooty temperature we have found out. So this is so this is the concept of lapse rate. Shall we solve a problem now? Yes, we will solve a problem now. Problem number? It is an interesting problem on hot air balloon. Okay. Problem number 19. Okay. So, I will call this as a hot air balloon problem. I ask such questions frequently in the interviews for MS and PhD students. I have a helium balloon, it is of some volume and I tie it, inflate it and leave it. How far will it rise? Will it go to the moon? How far, how far will it rise? Surprisingly, not many people are able to answer this simple question. It is a buoyancy, you know, the difference in density is still at such time because the density of air will keep on decreasing. At one point, it will become equal to the. So, right, we will do something like this, but this is a hot air balloon. This hot air balloon, people are also using it for fun, no? it is also using for a leisure, tourism, and all that. Okay. Please take down this problem. Hot air balloons on sightseeing flights. Hot air balloons on sightseeing flights attain volumes of 3000 meter cube. Okay. Huge. Okay. Consider a balloon whose total weight, consider a balloon whose total weight including the basket, fuel and passengers. But not the air in the balloon. Consider a balloon whose total weight, including the basket, fuel, and passengers, but not air in the balloon, on one such flight, on one such flight, is 550 kilogram. If the ground temperature is 30 degrees Celsius. Okay. If the ground temperature is lapse rate is zero to make it simple. If the ground temperature is thirty degrees centigrade, lapse rate is zero. Don't worry too much about the lapse rate. No, no. And the balloon is in hydrostatic equilibrium. And the balloon is in and the balloon is in hydrostatic equilibrium at a cruising altitude of 900 h bar. Some people may be surprised, sir does not know the difference between pressure and height. The basic idea of this course is pressure and height are the same. Okay. So, I will say altitude equal to 900 h bar, then you do z minus z 1 whatever z equal to uh, hydrostatic limit to cruising altitude 900 h bar. What do you want to find? Temperature. Ah, determine the temperature, determine the temperature, determine the temperature of the hot air inside the balloon, determine the temperature of hot air inside the balloon. So, your question is uh, very valid. 
uh, force balance and so here the net force equal to uh, the pressure is balanced by the buoyancy is balanced by the weight so please do it so please solve it so the temperature and the pressure of the outside air are given so the ideal gas equation is applicable to the environmental air as well as air in the balloon therefore rho infinity that is the density of the environmental air has to be found out first keep it okay then you write the force balance the only thing will which will be unknown is again the density of the hot air the density of the hot air you replace everything and keep temperature of the hot air inside the balloon as the unknown so that force balance equation can be converted to an equation in which the only unknown is the temperature of the hot air or you determine the density first and then p equal to rho rt for the air inside the balloon get the temperature if it is less than 30 degrees you are in serious trouble somewhere you have uh, not taken care of the minus sign correct hmm. uh, so who is the volunteer has anybody any luck yet got it now let us uh, try to solve it systematically so using a force balance So, rho is more than rho infinity or rho infinity is more than rho? What is this? Buoyancy force, very good. all that passenger basket all that they have been neglected huh? and uh, some energy required in inflating the balloon thick inelastic all those things will work uh, pack all that. this is equal to this is down what is this sorry sure mm. <laughs> and this is down is 550 into very good correct okay so what we will do is huh? is it okay so rho infinity applying the ide ideal gas equation to the environmental air H pi is how much? 10 to the power of 3. Eh? 2, 2. 2 eh? okay. What did I say T infinity as? <coughs> 3 not 3. three. Anusha, you are frowning that lapse rate. Suppose I made it the lapse rate, then you will integrate and all that. And such things are reserved for quiz and exam. Huh? You will have to struggle, you have to find the. Huh? But do not worry, tomorrow it will not be so difficult. Huh? Uh, so, rho infinity is, uh, what is this? What is the value? 1 point?
okay. Now, three thousand. What is rho? 0 0.8, huh? 0 0.7, 0 0.9, correct? 0 0.85, yeah? I want just one more confirmation. 0 0.8, please decide. 0.85. So, the first confirmation is rho is less than rho infinity that is why the balloon is so high up. So, it is good for us. So, we have reason to believe that we are proceeding in the right track. Okay. Now, okay. rho equal to p by r t balloon 0.85. What is the pressure? The air uh, the balloon is in uh, equilibrium, hydrostatic equilibrium. R is the same, huh? We can yeah, it is okay, we can take it as two eighty seven into T balloon. Hmm. What is T balloon? Kelvin. Kelvin. Hmm. Point nine, huh? Means uh, ninety. So the hot air balloon must be. So the people cannot be inside. They will be in the basket outside. How is this hot air produced? By burning. So, fuel, this thing, everything, the whole setup must be there. There should be fuel, there should be burner. So, this is you, you must have seen no, this basket and you must have seen in some movies and all this. Okay, so this is a typical, but then sometimes this also leads to freak accidents and so on. Big plane itself is disappearing, is not it? <laughs> uh? <laughs> so, but for, so, is it okay? So, this is a good. Uh, so, a good problem wherein we have learned lapse rate we have not used, other concepts we have learned, we have used. So, if I put the lapse rate, it is going to make it difficult, but it can is still solvable. So, now I will just introduce the concept of potential temperature and I will stop. Any doubts? Okay. That is something we want to see potential temperature, potential temperature theta. Huh? Let us do this. So, please take down this definition. The potential temperature theta, the potential temperature theta of an air parcel, the potential temperature theta of an air parcel is defined, the potential temperature theta of an air parcel is defined as the temperature that the parcel of air, the potential temperature theta of an air parcel is defined as the temperature that the parcel of air would have is the temperature that the parcel of air would have if it were expanded parcel of air would have would have if it were expanded or compressed so the potential temperature theta of an air parcel is defined as the temperature that the parcel of air would have if it were expanded or compressed adiabatically 
if it were compressed or expand, expanded or compressed adiabatically from its existing pressure, from its existing pressure and temperature to a standard pressure P naught. within bracket generally taken as 1000 h power which one standard pressure standard pressure p naught generally taken as 1000 h power okay i'll for the sake of completeness i'll go through this again people who miss certain things just listen to this carefully the potential temperature theta of an air parcel is defined as the temperature that the parcel of air would have if it were compressed or expanded adiabatically from its existing pressure and temperature to a standard pressure P naught generally taken as 1000 h power. So, the potential, so there is an air parcel at P and T, you are taking it to P naught, okay. What is the root? You are using an adiabatic process. Where dq equal to 0. The temperature the air parcel will take if you use an adiabatic process to reach P naught from P, that temperature is nothing but theta. We can derive it mathematically, but that we are going to do in the next class. What is the use of this potential temperature? The potential temperature concept is extremely potent and powerful. It is very useful in atmospheric thermodynamics because in most of the processes which are taking place in the atmosphere are adiabatic processes. If most of the process are adiabatic processes and we have a framework called potential temperature, in the next class I am going to prove that the potential temperature remains constant during adiabatic transformation, then we say that the potential temperature is conserved during many of the atmospheric processes. So if something is conserved during atmospheric processes with the potential temperature, we can learn so many things, we can work out problems, we can understand phenomena better. It is equivalent to density in incompressible fluid flow which will never change. The fluid may be accelerated, decelerated, pressure may increase, decrease, whatever. The dense, density of water, 1000 kilogram per meter cube, okay. Air is a different story, okay. So just like density in an incompressible fluid flow, the potential temperature remains conserved with which then we can define uh, something like equivalent potential temperature and this thing and so we can keep going and then we can construct charts and then instead of using equations to solve problems, if you are able to get adiabatic temperature, potential temperature, pseudo adiabatic temperature, wet bulb potential, dry bulb potential, all that. We are using charts, we can solve many problems. When some air parcel is going up, going down, it goes up, then it sheds this moisture, then it becomes rain. All those kinds of problems can be eminently solved without taking recourse to very complicated maths by just using the some of these concepts. So this derivation of this potential temperature and proving that the potential temperature remains constant along with the simple thing that PV to the power of gamma is a constant for adiabatic process. All this we will see in next Tuesday's class.